All right, guys, I'm going to do a quick uh, Froyo overview of Froyo on the Samsung Captivate. If you don't know, Froyo was leaked, or a Captivate Froyo build was leaked on XTA forums by the user at Design Gears. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first UV change I noticed, kind of lame, but the G icon on the Google search widget is now colored blue. So that kind of, you know, makes the home screen more color diverse. Um, also, you'll notice my live wallpaper in the background is new. This is a new touch stock touch with live wallpaper called the beach. Um, so it's, you know, it's the beach. You know, you have water over here. You can tap right here and cause ripples. And then back this up. If you go to the other side, there's sand. So you can play with that if you have the time. I don't really use live wallpapers. Also, the pull down drawer now has. GPS access to turn GPS on and off and you can now lock or turn off auto rotation or turn it back on before I think it was Wi-Fi Bluetooth vibration and silent so that is a welcome change um, if you long press you notice that all the widgets are now in the widgets including Samsung widgets and regular Android widgets are now in the widgets section whereas before Samsung widgets were separated out into the Samsung widgets so you have I th I'm pretty sure it's all the same widgets um, you have the Android 2.2 the market widget that's new to me anyway and the program monitor let's see what that is and that shows you how many active applications you have interesting um, speaking of which if you long press the home button the home soft key it shows you your recent applications, but also a link to a task manager, which is new to Captivate users. So it shows you all your running applications, you know, how much RAM they're using, how much CPU they're using. You can end all. So let's go ahead and end them. Um, it shows you the software you have installed and you can uninstall from here. The RAM manager allows you to clear memory. I'm gonna guess this is some type of garbage collection maybe not sure um, and summary shows your memory capacity and how much memory you're using in each of the four areas so you have program memory personal data memory your internal SD card and then your external SD card so that is cool um, if you long press the power button you, you, it brings up the phone options menu which was in older builds but now you have an option to turn off um, data usage for your for you know 3G or edge data so you know if I was on 3G or edge you know I can turn that data usage off also those icons are now in color like in the settings so um, another change is let's go into settings and the icons are now in color adding to the color diversity of TouchWiz um, so let's go to the build information real quickly. Um, so Android, or the firmware version is now 2.2. Uh, the baseband is I897UCJI6. The kernel version has been upgraded from 2.6.29 to 2.6.32. And the build number is froyo.ucji6. So that is pretty cool. Uh, a big addition is to this build is the ability to use your Captivate as a wireless router. Um, so if you click on, if you go into wireless networks and wireless and network, you can click on mobile AP and enable that. Allows you to connect to your Captivate from a Wi-Fi enabled device and use your 3G connection on that Wi-Fi enabled device. So you can enable that here. Also, um, you can change your SSID and enable security, which is in a form of WPA2 personal or PSK um, also there's option to enable USB tethering right now I don't have a USB device connected but if I did I can use my phone as a modem and abuse AT&T's 3G network um, any other changes if you go to mobile networks you can also ch turn off your 3G or edge data usage here as well so um, Let's go into location and security. There is a new option to use sensor aiding. 
enhance positioning and save power using sensors. I don't even know what that means, but hey, more options is always good. And then this device administration, select device administrators, this is a new option as well. Not sure what it's used for. Um, there's no soft menu for it, so can't really explain that one. Um, applications, this, if you go to your, your manage applications, UE has changed as well. Um, so you have your, it's like a tab window at the top. It shows your third party apps, your running apps, all your apps, and whoo, we have Adobe Flash Player 10.1 installed. So that is cool, and all this AT&T junk that I will never use. Hopefully, we can get a root and remove all of that stuff. So let's go. Also, if you have any applications that were moved to your SD card, which is a new feature for Android 2.2, you will see those applications here. Um, and there aren't any more changes that I can remember in that menu. Um, accounts and Sync is the same. The Android, the stock Android keyboard is not included with the Froyo build. It's just a swipe keyboard and the Samsung keyboard. So I'm not sure. I use the Android keyboard, so I'm not sure how I will adjust to that. We'll see. Um, and there aren't any more changes. I should go ahead and show you the um, Samsung keyboard real quick. There were a couple of minor, minor changes. Um, so we have here, it looks to be a little more grayer than the previous builds where it had a more bluish color to it. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Also, if you look closely enough, you can see that there are numbers in the corner of the top row of letters. So if for some reason you forgot that T, if you, you can also get a 5 from that. Well, there you go. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if this voice icon was there before either. I remember a lot of stuff from the last build. Um, let's go ahead and look at Flash. So let's go ahead and open up the browser. And I'm on a YouTube page already. Um, so we have the video here. And it is loading. And I turned the volume down but so you can play it. So there you go. Got, the, got Flash fully enabled on a YouTube desktop app. So if you double tap the Flash video or game you're using, you can make it full screen and play it like this so that's pretty cool I kinda feel bad for the girl who just got clothesline though so that's that's nice you have all your YouTube options at the bottom here you know you can change the resolution um, pause muted all that good stuff so let's go back another change in the browser I've seen is you can access your brightness setting directly from this first soft menu so whereas you had to press the soft menu and go into more and then change the brightness setting, you can now just change it from here. So I had it on the very lowest of the camera. So you can change it and have it be very bright and just kill your battery. Um, and that's all the changes I noticed so far. I know people want to see a quadrant benchmark. I don't really believe in that, but for what it's worth, let's go ahead and show that. One, here we go. Applications will scroll and quadrant. And we'll run this real quickly. We're on the full benchmark. And And it looks like it's taking forever and a day on a database write test. So here we go. We have graphic tests. And our score 
is going to be a surprising 971, which is still below the Motorola Droid X and significantly below the Nexus 1. And I heard the T-Mobile G2 had a score in the 1500. So, you know, for what it's worth, we're slower by over, I don't know what, 33 or 50 percent or whatever that is. So, um, another interesting fact or detail is system information. The new Chrono supposedly allowed, you know, the phone to access all 512 megabytes of memory. If we look at a total memory here, it looks like we have a total of 311 megabytes. So where the other 200 megabytes are, um, that is a mystery still in the latest Froyo build. So that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment or check out my blog at, which is emoney.com, E M U N. E E E dot com and I have some screenshots and other observations there. Thanks.